Yesterday, a beloved YouTube group made an announcement, and it did not go over well. They ended up getting dunked on more than a Fisher Price basketball hoop. It is the YouTube channel Watcher, as they announced their subscription based paywalled content strategy going forward. It is really interesting. So, for those that don't know, this is a very popular YouTube group called Watcher. They make very well produced content. I was unfamiliar with this channel until today with this news, but I was familiar with their work previously, like before they were Watcher. But they've been crushing it, clearly. Almost 3 million subs, every video getting like a million views, pretty much. It's all very high quality content. So then today, they posted this video, Goodbye YouTube. And it's like a really heartfelt video about what YouTube means to them, and it's, it's very dramatic. You know, it's saying things like, if this is my last time on YouTube, what a, what a fucking ride it's been. It's like the end to a 1990s action movie. YouTube, you son of a bitch, we had a good ride. That kind of thing, as they sail off into the sunset. But what they're actually doing is they're moving to their own subscription-based website. So, the strategy is, they're going to be, re be releasing a couple of episodes still on YouTube... But the rest of that season will be exclusively behind paywalled content at WatcherTV.com. The video is getting absolutely bombarded with dislikes, and a lot of people have soured their impression of this group, regardless of what they decide to do going forward, even if they do backtrack this decision. It's a maneuver that just did not land. They went for a kickflip and ended up breaking both their ankles on this bad boy here, and it's pretty simple to understand why. It's the whole concept of the content you were getting for free is now no longer going to be free. That just always leaves the taste of shit in people's mouths. It's the worst flavor. No one likes a poop pop. So understandably, a lot of people were voicing their concerns and their disappointment with this. Honestly, Watcher probably would have found more success if they made an announcement stating that one of the members had hit a deer on their way into work and they had no remorse or something. Like, th this hasn't been really a, a home run for them here. They said they made the service $5.99 because everyone and anyone can afford it. When did they see that? Well, I, I, I must have missed that statement. Was it in this video somewhere and I just am forgetting it? Because that is a crazy thing to say. First, Steven, talk about money. Yeah, what's this price? You can become a member of Watcher for $5.99 a month or $59.99 a year. We want to keep the price low enough where anybody and everybody is able to afford it. But it also oh, wow. has to support the things that we do here. So that was the number that just made the most sense for the streamer. That's very out of touch. I don't know how I how I missed that. I don't know how that flew under my radar. That is extraordinarily out of touch. That face right there says it all. Yep, that one just got ripped. Fuck it, we'll do it live, I guess. That's going in the final cut, are we sure? Eek. Let me lay down the reality here. Six dollars isn't nothing. Especially not in the current climate of things where everyone and their grandmother is making a subscription service for every single fucking thing on the planet. We're in the gold rush right now where every company is turning their content into a subscription-based monthly payment to access it. And I mean everything. If you want like a bag of beans delivered to you, you probably have to subscribe to the bag of bean delivery stork service for $5.99 a month. So this is yet another subscription charge they're trying to peddle here for previously free YouTube videos. That's just not worth it for the majority of people and just adds another a headache, an unnecessary subscription charge that I can't imagine many people being enthusiastic about paying for. Now, to be clear, they're not like removing their YouTube content that's already up. It's just going forward. They're only going to be releasing like the premiere of a season on their channel, and then the rest of that season is paywalled. Now, personally, I think it is a horrible idea. Going through their channel, their videos are long form content for the most part, like 30 minutes plus. And I imagine with their history working at BuzzFeed for BuzzFeed Unsolved, they've learned how to optimize mid-roll ads. So they're probably pulling in a very high RPM on, this videos, on, on those videos. I have to imagine that is already covering the cost of production. But on top of that, and I didn't know this until stream last night, they also have a very successful Patreon with over 12,000 members and three different monthly payment tiers.
And just for the cherry on top of this money cake, Mr. Krab style, they have a ton of merch, obviously, but the biggest thing is they do a ton of brand deals. From what I can see, they run a lot of ads in their content. And many of you might not remember this, I actually own a company that specializes in putting brands with YouTubers and running ads for major YouTube channels. It's called Mana Talent Group. And I started that back in 2018, so I know what these deals look like. So I'm going to break the magician's code here and give you a little spitball estimate on what I think they're making per ad. With a channel of their size and their views and this style of content, I would wager a guess that each brand that appears in their content is paying between fifteen and $35,000 a piece to be there. Now I know that's kind of a wide ballpark, it's just hard for me to guesstimate from the sidelines what their deals might look like, because longer term partnerships usually have discounts per slot because they've done a long term deal, whereas like one-offs or short term partners are paying more for like the couple of ads they're there for. But I'm confident that none of their brand partners are paying less than $15,000 to be on their content. And I'm pretty confident that it's probably going up to about 35 k for their more one-offs or short-term deals. So they're already making tons of money through their content. You were, you were right. They just don't really advertise it? Huh. So they already have this, and now they have Watcher TV, which is another subscription service, which I imagine is going to run congruent. Or, or if you pay five dollars here, do you also get Watcher TV access? I don't, I don't know. Is it somewhere in the perks? That is a lot of doubloons they are pulling in right now. They got twelve thousand members on that Patreon, and some of those tiers. That's a lot of bones. You're, you're not really in a financially struggling situation with this channel. I'm just going to lay down the brass tacks here. I saw a few people defending them saying like, no, they have 25 employees. They need to get their bread because it's very expensive. I'm going to peel back the curtain here real quick. I have more than 25 employees considering I also have an esports organization which has a lot of players on it. And I'm going to tell you... Since they're professional gamers, their salary is going to be significantly higher than their employees' cost. And I'm able to finance all of that completely fine through streaming. And my streaming numbers are nowhere near as lucrative as their Patreon numbers. It's not even close. Theirs blows me out of the water. And I'm not exactly struggling with all of those employees for our esports org. To really drive this point home, one of our star players was $10,000 a month. One. And we have well north of 25 in total. And I was still able to do all of that through a fraction of their numbers here with what they're making on Patreon. And I have like a fourth of their RPM. My RPM on YouTube is about three. And I'm confident that the Watcher channel is probably seeing north of eight to nine RPM on their videos. And still, I wasn't exactly struggling to cover all of these employees' costs. So I don't think that this subscription paywall service is necessary for them to stay afloat, especially not since they have this Patreon and they have such a successful YouTube channel already. Now this isn't exclusive to just Watcher. There's been a lot of channels that have done similar things and some of them have seen different degrees of success. I was researching it at the end of stream last night. However, all of the examples I can find of YouTube groups making their own third-party platforms where you can subscribe for exclusive content, that's a little different because they're not taking what was already free from that channel and putting it behind a paywall. They're adding like behind-the-scenes stuff, brand new shows, things like that, exclusive to that subscription tier on that third-party website. And for a couple of them, I saw that their third-party website was free with ads and you had the option of subscribing for a monthly fee, whereas Watcher TV is only the $6 a month subscription fee, or the $60 a year. And it's weird, because Watcher is already doing what those other channels do on their third-party platform on their Patreon. They're already offering, like, the exclusive stuff there for the monthly charges, and now they're adding another separate monthly charge for the content that people were used to getting for free on YouTube. So it's really just such a fucking mess. Now, of course, there's no telling if this is going to be a successful venture for them. It certainly doesn't look like it based on the reception here and all the tomatoes that are getting tossed at them. But with an audience of their size, they don't need a large portion of them to sign up at $5.99 a month to make it viable. 
they don't need a large number of conversion here, and I think they know that. But I really think that they're going to be surprised with how little will likely sign up here, because it is expensive. That's not... That's not nothing. They keep... Well, they framed it like $6 a month is affordable to everyone. What? We all have $6 lying around. You guys don't have phones? You got 6 bucks. Like, they make it sound like it's basically nothing when it's not. That's a lot, especially on top of every other subscription that people have in their daily lives. But I just really think it's a pretty dumb idea. This is going to completely kill their growth as a brand. It's going to be a very hard sell to people that don't know The Watcher why they should be willing to pay $5.99 a month to watch YouTube videos. Like, that's just not an easy thing to sell to people. It only come from a very loyal fan base that's already hooked on their content in this audience they built on YouTube, which they're now abandoning. So they're not really going to be bringing in new people, I don't think. Even with dropping, like, the premiere video on their channel, I think that's just going to frustrate people more. Like, oh, I really want to watch the rest of this. Oh, but I have to pay $6.99 for it, and I only get this? Like, that's not worth. It just, to me, doesn't seem like it's going to be a good long-term plan. But I could be totally wrong. Who knows? Maybe people are, like, elated and can't wait to pay for more streaming services. I think that blows ass. I'm so tired of streaming services popping up all over the place like a fucking plague. It's like Hydra. Cut off one head and two more streaming services take its place. And now we're seeing it for YouTubers? Like, that's not exciting. Point blank, I just do not like it. I do not like Green Exit Ham. I do not like it, Sam I Am. Watcher TV, what a sham. I understand why some other YouTube channels have third-party places where they can pay for more content. But they're paying for more content on top of what they're already getting on YouTube. So, like, I know Ross Creations has one, which apparently people really like the way he does it. I know Sidemen have Sidemen Plus, and it seems like people like that as well. And from what I can tell, that's just giving you, like, the very loyal, like, ferocious fans more of what you already like. So you're getting, like, behind-the-scenes stuff, you're getting exclusive content that is totally separate from the content that they're already getting on the primary platform. Whereas with Watcher... That's not the case. You're losing what you're used to, and that's it. You now have to access it through $6 a month to get that same content. It just doesn't feel good. Especially because they already have a Patreon. Like, they were already doing the standard, which people don't mind, and I don't think there's anything wrong with. Where, you know, your audience pays the Patreon monthly fee or whatever, and they just get more content from you guys. The behind the scenes, the podcast, the special edition stuff, uh, the sneak peeks, whatever. Like, that makes sense. Like, that's value there, and they keep getting the content that they're used to, that you've been providing to them for free, that made them a fan in the first place on YouTube. I don't know, it just feels like a real slap in the face, and I totally understand why people are upset about it. I don't like it either. And I hope this isn't the, the direction a lot of YouTubers decide to go down in the future. I don't really know why they thought this would go over well. To me, it really seems like some kind of corpo suit came in there, like a devil on their shoulder whispering in their ear that this is the way of the future. This is the way to do things. Making subscription-based third-party services outside of YouTube. Grow your presence on YouTube and then abandon it. Try and take all of them to your third-party site where you can really milk them dry for more money. It's It sucks. Like, that's just not healthy at all. There's nothing good about that direction. But yeah, anyway, I just wanted to kind of talk about this a little bit. That's really it. See ya.